here with Nadia Gross of Mill Creek Bakery. And Nadia, what you want to do for St. Patrick's Day is celebrate with dessert. I know I do. Yes. And you have a really cute Irish themed dessert for us today. What are we making? So we're going to make a Bailey's buttercream cake with mm. a Guinness chocolate cake and a Bailey's chocolate ganache filling. Nice. <laughs> and then nice. all decked out with everything St. Patrick's Day themed. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, let's get started. What are we doing? Sure. So first we're going to start off with making the buttercream. I already made the cake layers yesterday. I usually make them a day in advance just so that they can be in the freezer or the refrigerator. It's much easier to work with cake layers that are a little bit harder and it doesn't ruin the consistency at all. Actually, I wrap them when they're a bit warm and it locks in the moisture. Oh, nice. So when they come to room temperature, it just kind of releases all of its moisture. Okay. So this butter I took out about two hours ago and I said it wasn't quite to room temp yet. It has a lot to do with like the temperature in the room, whether mm -hmm. or not it comes to room temperature. If it was summertime, a lot quicker. A lot quicker. <laughs> so we did what, four sticks in there? Yep, so I usually, this is my typical buttercream recipe. It's strictly butter, buttercream, and I usually use heavy cream and vanilla extract. But for this one, I'm gonna incorporate the Baileys into oh, it. Right. So I'm gonna stop this, and now you can see that it's become a lot yeah, whiter in yeah. um, color, and it has like doubled in size. So that's what you're looking for. Um, it gives you like a nice, fluffy, smooth buttercream. Okay. So I'm gonna incorporate actually an entire bag of powdered sugar. <laughs> okay. So I cover the bowl with the paper towel because if not, the powdered sugar goes everywhere. So I wait until it's at least incorporated and then I'll remove the paper That's towel. a good tip. Yes. Because you know, I can I've see someone lot turning it on. <laughs> oh yeah. Flies. So now I'm gonna incorporate the Baileys. And I mix it on low like that because if you mix it on high, it incorporates too much air into it and then it adds too many air bubbles. So when you go to ice the cake, oh. it'll be hard to get yeah. it very smooth. So I am gonna put this into a piping bag because when you put a filling in, you need a rim around so the filling does not come out of oh, the cake. Oh, all right. Yeah, and I use this um, star tip. This is a Wilton star tip. So I made this ganache last night. This is just heavy cream. Baileys and semi-sweet chocolate. So you heat up the heavy cream in the Baileys first and then you pour it over the chocolate. And once it melts the chocolate, you can slowly stir it so it doesn't get too many air bubbles in it. You have to put the plastic wrap directly on top of the ganache oh. so that it doesn't form a film. And I always make it a day ahead of time. It's pretty liquidy after you make it yeah. and then it hardens up, but like not hard enough to... Oh, you can still work with it. Yeah. yeah. And I just make sure it's even on all sides. And then I do press down a little bit just to get out any air bubbles. So this one I actually put on upside down so that it's even with how this one is. Okay. All right. And then this one's ready for a dirty icing, crumb icing, whatever you want to call it. I usually call it the crumb coat. So this just goes around and locks in all those crumbs. So I put it in the refrigerator or the freezer just to lock in this outside crumb coat. And then we go and do the final coat and the decorating. Okay. So this sat in the freezer for about five minutes and now it's cool to the touch and it formed that crust that I was talking about. So now it'll be easier to put that almost the final coat on. This, all right. So we're gonna go around with the white all over again. I get all of my cake scrapers that I use from, it's Esther Cakes, she has a website. So it's slowly gonna come together and it's gonna create the divots and that's where we're gonna put the color. And you can kind of see where the air bubbles are and that's from like whipping up the buttercream a little bit. But as you scrape, you can also put more buttercream in there to get rid of some of those air bubbles. Ooh, we have a rainbow ready here. Yeah, so all my colors are mixed up, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is put them in each one of these slots to create okay. the rainbow look. And since it was in the freezer, the white that's on there has formed that crust and is a little bit harder, so then they shouldn't blend together. Okay. And as I'm scraping it, it's gonna look like nothing's gonna come together, but eventually it does come together. <laughs> crazy. How are you going to get the white sections back in between? Does that just keep going yeah. around? Oh yeah, I can see the bottom is starting to do that. Yeah, oh, so wow. the more I scrape, <gasps> the more it'll come together. Yeah, there we go, I can see that. I'm also going to add a cake topper on here, but I get all of my cake toppers from my friend, her name's Brittany, and she creates 
beautiful masterpieces, woodworking, and she does signs, and wow. so she does all of my acrylic cake oh, toppers. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Okay, so our rainbow needs the pot of gold, right? Yes, so we need the gold drip. So the way that I'm gonna make this is I'm gonna use, um, this is gold highlighter, gold luster dust. It goes by different names, but it is edible and it comes in a powder form. But when you add a liquid to it, I use a vanilla extract. The alcohol in the extract evaporates and then it just leaves the gold. So I'm gonna add probably about equal parts of these. So you'll see when you go to drip it, mm -hmm. you don't want it to be too loose because it'll go all the way down the cake. So you want it enough to hold on to it. So that seems pretty perfect there. So now I'll run downstairs and grab the cake because it's been cooling in the freezer. So we have another step yet. Yes, um, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat up my offset spatula and then this will soften up the icing on top. That way the sprinkles will stick. Oh, nice. All right, and then I mixed up my black. Now this is for the little pots of gold. Yep. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my little coins. Our coins, right? And then last but not least, we'll put on the shamrocks. Yes. Going to complete the cake with the cake topper. And there it is, St. Patrick's Day rainbow pot of gold cake. And it's ready. <laughs> Nadia, these look so festive and so much fun for St. Patrick's Thank Day. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love them. And I want you to tell everybody how they can get in touch with you here at Mill Creek Bakery. Yeah, so I have a Facebook and Instagram page. That's Mill Creek Bakery. You can message me on either one of the social media platforms or I have an email address, which is millcreekbakery668 at gmail.com. And you can email me with any inquiries and I can give you a quote from there. I do more than just custom cakes. I also do cupcakes and other specialty pastries. Everything can be picked up here at my home location, which is located in South Sterling, Pennsylvania. I do offer delivery for an additional charge. And we have a wedding venue right next to our house, which is Walmpaw Pat Creek Farm. And they offer weddings or events or birthday parties at their barn, which was restored by the Amish and I offer free delivery to that venue, but I can deliver anywhere in the area. Excellent, thank you so much You're for having so us. You're so welcome. We really appreciate it and we wish you a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks, Nadia. <laughs>